friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and today we are doing my January 2024 wrap up and my February TBR. <laughs> Oh my gosh it feels like I have not talked to you guys in a while and it's because I haven't I only managed to put out one video in January and that was just a little tiny single book review and that is because this has been the most busy time uh, in a while um, I started a new job at the end of 2023 and it has ramped up it's so busy right now which is great I really love the work but it's definitely very busy, especially with compounding on top of my other part-time job in which January, February, March, and April are the busiest times of the year for that job as well. So, and then, you know, you add in post-holiday stuff and just, you know, trying to get back on track for the new year and all the things. Yeah, it's been a very, very, very busy time. And the fact is, is that I've been reading a lot of books. I have eight books to talk about for January, which is kind of amazing, um, considering I feel like I don't have any time at all. <laughs> but the problem is, is that to film and edit, that is where it's really, really tricky. Without further ado, sorry I've been away, but let's get into what I read in January. Okay, the first book that I read in January was How Can I Help You by Laura Sims. I believe that this is marketed as a thriller or a cat and mouse game, something like that. This is about two women who work in a library and one of those women has a very dark and murderous past. And the other woman in the library thinks that she's catching on to her secret. So it is about these two women kind of trying to navigate each other and I did not really love this. I ended up giving it at like, I don't know, a three, a low three, 2.75. Um, I just did not really find this to be <laughs> interesting at all. I did think that at first the character voice was fun, but it just, there was not enough suspense really. I feel that you really are not as the reader kept in suspense because you are told up front that this woman is a murderer it's not a secret and so it's not as much fun as like if you would be following the one woman and like trying to figure out if she is or isn't a serial killer like it's just not that fun because you know right away what's going on so I don't know other people have enjoyed this I think it's kind of a fun idea it's just like it was not the high octane super exciting cat and mouse game that I typically like when doing that trope. So yeah, kind of forgettable to me. And then I read Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. This is a horror novel, an urban horror novel, and it follows a young couple in New York City. They have just had their first child and they have struck gold by winning an affordable housing lottery that allows them to live in a super fancy, very aspirational luxury apartment in New York and unfortunately they soon realize that the apartment is not all that it claims to be. I have an entire review on my channel so if you want to hear my full in-depth thoughts go and watch that but otherwise uh <laughs> yeah again I this is one that I actually really wanted to love. This was a five-star prediction for me at first just because I do love stories about like young couples with kids and it's kind of a haunted house story but it's an apartment. I was interested in that and I have heard that Nat Cassidy does a lot of social commentary in his horror which is something that I do always enjoy but unfortunately I just did not vibe with the writing style of this book. It's very contemporary, it's very casual and that just is not my style of writing it's just not what I typically lean towards or like to read and so because of that I just it yeah it was hard for me to get over that and then on top of that I just also just did not think this was very scary so yeah it's a three maybe a 3.5 if I'm being generous but unfortunately this did not quite hit what I wanted it to hit so all right oh my gosh and on top of being super busy, I was, I'm was. i also just kind of recovering from either it was like sinus pressure or I've been sick recently. It's just 
not good. It's even hard for me to like talk now. Like my voice is not getting out properly. <laughs> okay, moving on. The next book that I read was Ascension by Nicholas Binge. And this is a sci-fi story about a team of researchers who go up this mountain that has just appeared in the middle of the ocean. And it's clearly from uh, something or somewhere that uh, humans have never seen before. So these scientists have to go onto the mountain and figure out what's going on and who knows what they are going to encounter there. And this book is obviously in the setup. It's very, very similar to Annihilation. I, I haven't read the book, but the movie, so I don't know how the book compares, but the setup, very similar to Annihilation. Even the title is close to Annihilation. Annihilation, Ascension, same kind of concept. But I did end up actually enjoying this book a lot. I would say that it's kind of simple and predictable in its setup. Like it's very, very familiar, but it is done well. It's well executed. The author knew what they wanted to talk about. They knew what stories they were going to tell and just did it well. Like the writing is strong. Um, the character makes sense to me. I think like the team members could have been a little bit more developed, but I do understand. Like I see their purpose. It has a lot of philosophical elements and, you know, metaphorical, like with the ascension and kind of there's some concepts of religion in there and like I, I could see what the author was going for and I thought that it was pretty well done. Um, I think the only downfall though is that this is such a familiar setup and such a familiar story that I don't know if this is the one that does it the absolute best but still solid and uh, a well written book overall. And then for my book club we decided to read a short memoir and that was Heating and Cooling 52 Micro Memoirs by Beth Ann Fennelly. And this is a really, really, really short nonfiction memoir. It's like little, like a barely over 150 pages. It might even be less than that. And the concept behind this is that all of these sections of the memoir are very, very short. Like the longest one is like four pages and there's some as short as one single sentence. And I love a creative memoir, a creative nonfiction book. I love it when they change up formats of memoirs. I love it when authors do that. So this was kind of right up my alley. That being said though, I did not feel like I was really connecting with who this author was because the downside of having things that are so short is that you just don't really get to understand who this person is. And, and like for it being a memoir, you really should understand who this person is by the end of it. And frankly, there was another memoir that we read as a book club that is called An Encyclopedia of an Ordinary Life. And that one did this concept so much better. It is a very, very, very similar concept. And Encyclopedia of an Ordinary Life really stuck with me. I think it's so beautiful, so moving. It just really worked for me in every way. Heating and cooling is honestly quite forgettable. I don't think this is going to stick with me. I've actually already forgot that I read it in January, so. Yeah, I I don't know that I would recommend this one just because I don't think it does enough to really stand out, but it's short and it does have a pretty interesting format if you've never seen that before. And then I read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I was so excited when this book finally came in early January because I had ordered it at the end of the year during the Barnes Noble sale and they had to send it to me. So I was excited to get this. I did officially get it in January. And yes, I did end up reading it and I, I had a good time with it. Like this is the kind of thing, this is the kind of romance that would work for me. I, it's actually not super romance heavy. It's definitely in there, but there's also a lot of focus on our protagonist, Emily, who is a professor and she is like the expert on the fairy and folk people. And she is going to this very remote location in the North I believe that this is meant to be a fictional version of Iceland. So she's going to this remote location to learn about this last breed of fairies, this last species of fairies that pretty much no human has really done thorough research on. So this is how she's going to complete her encyclopedia of fairies. She has to go and meet these fairy people. And she is just really fun as a character, although I don't think that everybody would agree with that statement. I do feel that some people are going to find her super annoying and I completely understand that, but it worked for me. 
I like it when our protagonists are very outside the norm. I like it when they're um, almost like antisocial. She's certainly antisocial. I actually like that element in protagonists. I just think it's hilarious and fun and I just love it every time. So that worked for me. The romance is sweet and this is definitely a slower burn. I don't know if it would, I know I don't, I don't really read romance so I can't even say like if it's actually a slow burn but it's definitely not um, a fast <laughs> romance that occurs. And obviously there is a second one and I do have the second one so I will be reading that at some point. Yeah, I liked this. I thought the magic was really in depth actually and the world building is really strong. The atmosphere was very fun. It takes place in this cold environment so it was perfect to read for winter. And just overall it was something different, very unusual for me to pick up and not something that I would normally read and I had a good time with it. And then my book club actually read two books in January because both of them were so short. The second one being A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is a cozy solar punk sci-fi story about a future in which it's post the AI robot revolution. It is after the robots gain consciousness and the robots and the humans create a pact that allow the robots to go and live without the interference of humans, which is a really fun idea. I really, really enjoyed the concept of that. And this follows our protagonist, Dex. I believe that's their name. Yes, yes. This follows our protagonist, Dex, who is trying to understand what their purpose in life is, or to try to understand what makes them happy and fulfilled. And they come across a robot in the forest, and they have this philosophical and yet cozy dialogue about what it means to be happy and it is a very sweet story um I did only end up giving this a three though I don't think I loved it as much as other people love it just because the philosophy is so heavy-handed and in your face like it is literally just these two having a very explicit like dialogue and I just you know prefer my themes to be a little bit more nuanced in that regard and also, I'm not going to lie, I heard that this was a cozy book, so I was a little bit thrown off that I didn't find the writing style to be super cozy. And I like this is again, once again, just a very personal preference thing. I just don't really like contemporary voice in my writing. It's just something that I'm coming to realize it puts me off very easily. And that's, that's what I'm saying, like, about both this one and Nestlings. Like, it's not really, like, the book's fault. Like, these are definitely accessible writing styles, and I feel like that's good. But they're just not my writing style. They're not the thing that I enjoy, and that's okay. Um, that being said, this is super short, and it is really cute and sweet, and I do own the second one, so I will be reading the second one. Um, and I just love this cover. I love this cover so much. Fabulous. Next up, we have A History of Wild Places by Shea, Shea? Of Earnshaw. Shea Earnshaw. Um, this is a book that has made its book two rounds. You've probably seen it before. It has been talked about. It's not a particularly new release. I think it's like 2021, 2020, somewhere in there, maybe even earlier. Um, this follows a detective or a, a semi-detective who's trying to find a woman who went missing in the California wilderness. And it is revealed very early on, this is not a spoiler, this comes up very early, that she came into contact with a community that was living in those deep woods that have not been in contact with the rest of society. Uh, so basically a cult. <laughs> um, and this is a contemporary I was gonna say literary but it's really not actually that literary it's more just like a contemporary fiction book um I I don't know if I would even say suspense like I don't know I think it's just very it's a very straightforward story in a lot of ways there's maybe a little bit of mystery um but it's not actually about the mystery I wouldn't say it's really just a big 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 chunk of it is focused on this community and the relationships be between the people that live there. And that's interesting. Like this started out as a book that I would like. I do tend to really like books that are just grounded about people and all these characters that are kind of swirling around each other and swirling around a truth. And then eventually they get there. 
that is something that I do really like. But my problem with this is the ending. Um, I thought the ending was so ridiculous. I really just couldn't believe that that was where we were going with this. I really did not care for any of it. It was also, I know people have said it's very predictable. It is predictable. I don't think that in and of itself is a problem for me. I just didn't feel like the author really took us to the place that she wanted us to land with this story. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I liked it at first. I was really on board, but the longer it went on and like at about 70%, I was like, okay, I'm ready for this to be done. And like, I just do not think the ending really drove home the point that she thought it was gonna drive home. So yeah, this started out strong, but ended up being only a three. And I, yeah, I'm probably gonna end up unhauling this because I'm never gonna reread this and I don't really know who I would recommend this to. So yeah, sorry. And finally, my last book of January was Leech by Hiran Ennis. And this is a sci-fi fantasy horror novel. And this was wild. This was wild from start to finish. This is a very challenging book in a lot of ways. First off, because it just is confusing to begin with. It's intentionally confusing up front. This follows a doctor who is going to this um, icy isolated chateau where the former doctor who was there is found dead and the doctor has to figure out what happened and what's going on and there is a parasite that is found very very early on and it kind of just goes off the rails from there this does involve a lot of messing with perspective with voice with consciousness um it's sci-fi and it's very dark and atmospheric. Yeah, that there's this is this book is is tough because it's challenging in that it's confusing, but it's also challenging in that it deals with a lot of heavy themes, um, some very triggering themes actually. So if you are thinking about reading this book, definitely you know check the the trigger warnings on Storygraph. Look up some notes on Goodreads because there is some pretty dark stuff in here and also a lot of body horror. There's a lot of body horror, but I actually didn't find it like scary. Like I wasn't feeling tense. It's just uh, gruesome in its descriptions, but very, very atmospheric. Um, I ended up giving this like a four, low four, like a 3.75. I did enjoy this because it's super inventive. I've never read anything like it. The story is crazy and I can't believe that someone thought this up in their brain and got it down on paper. The writing is strong um, and it was unusual. It's very strange. It's a strange, strange book. So I did like it for all of those things, but at the end of the day, I didn't really love it because I felt like it was a little bit too long and I wanted it to be more like suspenseful. I thought the ideas were really cool, but I wanted more suspense. So there we go. That is what I read in January. It's pretty varied between genre and styles and thoughts. And yeah, I mean, very, I just kind of went wild in January. I didn't even really have a TBR. I don't think I had any TBR. Um, but in February, we have got a very ambitious TBR. I will say the only thing that I did try to do was that one of my January goals was that I was going to read three books that I had purchased during the holiday season. And I'm happy to say that I did accomplish that. These three books, Song of the Wild Built, Nestlings, and Encyclopedia Fairies were all bought during the holiday season. So I accomplished my goal there. I also tried to do Leandra's TBR-a-thon. I tried to do the road trip one, which I mentioned in one of my most recent videos. And I got pretty far because I did read Nestlings for the lake prompt and Encyclopedia Fairies for the cozy prompt. But then I ran out of time. I ran out of time. I was just... It was taking me too long and I didn't have the time to read some of the other books I wanted to read. So I thought I could count some of the Wild Built for the fantasy prompt, but it, this is not fantasy. It's sci-fi, 
maybe you could call it fantasy but like I feel like it would have been cheating to call this fantasy and same thing even with Leech which I wasn't planning on reading I actually ended up reading this one just because it was available on audiobook um but this is definitely more sci-fi than it is fantasy although you could argue for both of them but I just felt like it was cheating so did not technically complete TBR-a-thon but I sure tried I sure tried um I don't know maybe you guys want to be nice and count either one or both of these as fantasy so I can like complete the board but yeah those were the only things I was trying to do in January otherwise I just picked up things like semi-randomly so there you go but for February I have a lot of video ideas. I have some things I really 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 want to get to. It is going to be challenging to get to all of them. Let me start with my book club books. So first of all we have for my book club we have chosen The Lesbianist Guide to Catholic School by Sonia Reyes and this is a young adult novel about a young girl who yes is going to Catholic school and she's a lesbian and she is I believe she is trying to kind of ignore her desire to be in a relationship. She does not want to think about romance. She just wants to get good grades and focus on her schooling. And then she meets a very, very beautiful young woman. Um, <laughs> it's a romance. I'm not really sure. I don't really know too much about it. But excited to read it because I'll tell you, I have been in a bit of a romance mood. I've been trying to find something that'll scratch that romance itch that was kind of started with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I guess I could just read the second one, but I feel like I want something that's going to move a little bit faster because Emily Wilde's definitely does not move fast. And I think I just want something to scratch that itch quickly. Um, and this book was chosen for my book club. So that's great. Let's read it and see what it's about. Other book club picks I have Out There Screaming, an anthology of black horror edited by Jordan Peele. This is a short story collection of horror short stories written by black authors. February is Black History Month and this is what was chosen for the Literally Dead book club for February. I have had this on my shelf since like the month it was released which was like November or maybe even earlier 2023 so this has been sitting on my shelf just waiting for February to roll around and now it is finally here and I'm very excited because I've heard a lot of good things about this short story collection and I'm just interested in digging into it although I will say that short story collections have not really been doing great for me recently so I'm hoping that this will break the pattern. Okay now I'm going to get into a couple selections that are for videos. The first one being Near the Bone by Christina Henry. This is a horror book about I believe about a woman who's isolated in this winter cabin and there is something that is hunting her or something. Honestly don't really know. It's winter, it's an isolated cabin and I am hoping to read this and create a kind of isolated winter horror thriller vlog. Meant to do it in January, didn't get around to it, so February it is. I have heard that this one is absolutely fantastic, although I have never read anything by Christina Henry, so I don't really know what I'm getting into. I'm just excited. I want something that I'm going to like fly through and be really genuinely scared by and moved by, so I'm excited for this one. I also want to read Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates, another author I have never read from. And again, a synopsis I don't really know about. It's winter, it's isolated, and it's horror thriller. So we will give it a try. And also The Hunger by Alma Katsu. This is a retelling, a reimagining of the story of the Donner Party um, who were cannibals. They were cannibals. And I believe that that is basically this entire book. Again, never read an Amakatsu. So in this vlog, if I do get to the three books that I'm mentioning here, I have never read from any of these authors and they are all women. So we are doing a female-centered, never before read to me author winter horror thriller reading vlog. Good work, good marketing there. And then I have The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett. And I am dying to get to this book because it just 
came out with the US publication like last week. So I immediately, the second that this came out, had to get my hands on it because I absolutely loved the appeal by Janice Hallett last year. So I've been just dying to get to this book. And I'm thinking of making it a little kind of reading vlog along with West Hurst Kills by, can't remember the author right now, but this one I also have on hold at the library for me right now. And I was thinking of combining these two books into a reading vlog because they are both kind of mixed media, alternative media, meta, murder mysteries. A lot of M's right there. So this follows, I, you know what? I don't know. I believe that they're detectives. And again, I also think that there's a cult in this one and it is mixed media to some regard. I think it's emails. I think it's police correspondent. I think it's interviews. And beyond that, I don't really know. I'm just going to go in completely blind because I trust Janice Hallett with my life. And then Westhurst Kills, I think, is a kind of meta reimagining of a murder mystery. I don't know too much about that one, but I'm excited to try it. So we'll see how that goes. And then a video I'm really, really excited for. That is going to be my February romance, but make it horror vlog. And that is ideally, hopefully, going to feature Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. This is a short novella about a sapphic romance probably gone wrong. It's a horror book, so I assume something goes wrong at some point, but I don't really know. So very excited to read this. This is a signed copy that I got on my Atlanta Indie Bookshop crawl, so it would be great to get to another book that I purchased during the holidays. That would be wonderful. I'm also trying to hit my goal of reading one classic per quarter, and for this quarter, I think it would be really excellent to finally read The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Um, I do think I'll probably end up doing this on audiobook. Look, this, this is my edition of it. I found it at a used bookstore, and I don't, don't love this cover edition, but if I end up loving the book, maybe I will go out and get myself a nicer copy of it, but this is the one I have for now. Phantom of the Opera, I've seen the musical, and I, I've heard the book is really good, so I'm gonna try for that one. And lastly, for that vlog, I would also love to get to A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a booktube darling and a book that I really think will be five stars for me. I'm, once again, itching for that romance, that really feel-good romance mood, but obviously this is a Dracula-inspired story. I think it is following the diaries of one of Dracula's wives. So I'm very much looking forward to get to that one. It's also one that I just, you know, everybody has read it and I feel like I want to be a part of this conversation and I feel like I will really, really like it. So that is a five-star prediction. And then I have a handful of books here that are not for a video, uh, books that have been kind of on my mind and I want to find a way to fit them in. The first one being Airplane Mode and Irreverent History of Travel by Shanaz Habib. So the thing is, is that I wanted to read this one for January's TBR-a-thon because there was a prompt on the board that said a travel-focused book. Obviously, with this being a non-fiction book focused on travel, that would hit that prompt. But like I said, I didn't get time for it, didn't get around to it, but still very, very high on my interest, on my radar right now. So I would love to get to this in February. Plus, it would also knock off my second of my nonfiction that I need to read for this quarter because Heating and Cooling was a memoir, so that would make it nonfiction. So that's one. This would be two, which would be great if we could get two of them knocked out right away. Next one I'm dying to read is Wellness by Nathan Hill. This was super, super, super high on my radar for January. And again, I did want to get to it for tbr -thon, but I just ran out of time and this thing is thick. It's like over 600 pages. Tried to fit this into a prompt, couldn't really make one work. Although I tried to say it was like for the urban prompt because this takes place largely in Chicago, so that counts. But again, didn't get to it because of the timing, but I'm dying to read this. I'm almost considering making this my first book of February, even though it's so long and it does not fit to any of my videos. So like, what would be the point of doing that? Doesn't really make a lot of sense to do that. So I don't know, maybe I won't do that. <laughs> but 
really, really looking forward to reading this eventually. I have an ARC that I would like to try. This is The Other Valley by Scott Alexander Howard. This is a speculative literary novel about a town that has some sort of time manipulation. It's speculative. I don't think it's sci-fi. I think it's like kind of magical, speculative kind of concept. And it does say that it's for fans of David Mitchell, Ruth Ozeki, and Kazuo Isaguro. So very much up my alley. I wanted to give this a very fair shot because it says that it comes out on February 27th. So it would be awesome if I could get around to this. And finally, a book that I have checked out from the library, so I really should get to it as soon as possible. That's The Center by Ashia Menzir Sadiq. This is I believe it's a horror. I don't know if it's classified as horror, but it follows a young woman who is in a school for translation and she starts learning a secret, some sort of secret magic to do with translation and eventually it gets out of hand. It kind of almost sounds like Babel by R.F. Kuang, but I don't think, I think the themes are going to be completely different. It just with the linguistics and the language magic and stuff like that could be really cool. I've seen a lot of people really enjoy this one recently and I'm obsessed with this cover like genuinely obsessed. I was also going to read this one and bloom for like a horror floral kind of vlog. That was an idea that I had because I saw bloom but I was actually thinking of the center or like I went to look for this one during my indie bookshop crawl and I found this one and I was like oh they're so similar covers. Anyway both of them are on my February TBR. And I believe that is it. I mean, as if that is not enough, like my goodness. Oh wait, I didn't even do my TBR jar. I know that even though I have such a massive stack of books, I shouldn't even be doing this. But I did say that every other month of the year, I would be pulling from a TBR, not a jar, it's a TBR teacup, a TBR teacup. So I guess I will go ahead and do that now and hopefully, the prompt that I choose, I hope it corresponds to one of these books that I already have listed here. Um, so because my February TBR is already so ambitious and I have a lot of video plans, I'm only going to pull one prompt. So let's see. Let's see what we get here. I'm very, very nervous. This one. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, let's see what it's going to be. A book with an orange cover. Do any of these have orange covers? None of these have orange covers. That's so sad. Um, okay, none of those have orange covers. Maybe could I find an orange cover of Phantom of the Opera to check that off? <sighs> no, I think I'm going to have to add another book to this TBR. Oh gosh. Okay, hold on. Okay, so when I put this prompt <laughs> in my TBR teacup, the book that I really envisioned for this prompt is The Reformatory by Tiana Reeve Dew, and I am dying to get to this book. This is a horror book based on true events that took place in Texas, um, and it follows a black boy who is sent to this boarding school for um, children, and they do very, very bad things to those children. So it's a, it's a tough read. It's a heavy subject matter, but I have heard that it is absolutely fantastic and I'm dying to read it. I have bought it very, very recently. So that is what this prompt was supposed to be getting at. However, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get to it this month. I really do want to, but like looking at my stack, I don't know if it's going to be possible, but this would also be a great pick for... Black History Month as well. Um, this does deal with a lot of heavy topics of race and um, about some very horrible things that were happening at the time. So maybe I actually really should prioritize this. There are definitely other vlogs and things that I could move. So I don't know, maybe I'm talking myself into reading this one. But if I really cannot find the time, I might just cheat and read the second book, um, the second volume of The Promised Neverland. This is manga series about children who are living in this orphanage and they discover a very, very dark secret about the orphanage and they have to escape with their lives. Um, does this count as orange? This is kind of like golden yellow. I don't know, it looks orange to me. It, it's very, very orange. So 
I might count it. I can absolutely get through this. If I really, really cannot find a way to get the reformatory in there, we'll just have to see what happens. So those are my two options for my orange cover. Oh, also, I am currently reading Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. I do graciously have an arc from NetGalley. Very, very excited to finish it. I'm at a very awkward like 70%, so it doesn't count for January. It'll end up counting in for February, but currently reading that and I'll have a review up very, very soon, a dedicated review for it. And I believe that it's also going to be a February Aardvark book pick, which means I will get my own copy very, very soon. There you go. Those are all the books that I would love to get to in February, but obviously looking at the stack all together, whew, we, we will see. We will see. I'm going to try to get it done. Um, let me know down in the comments below what was the best book that you read in January and or what is your favorite romance book to read for February. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, week, month, year, and I will see you back here hopefully sooner rather than later <laughs> next time. Thanks so much. Bye! Mm -hmm.